we've been talking in the afternoon about how we extract value from the recursion operating system. <clears throat> and we do so in two primary ways. As Laura earlier today and Shafiq just most recently spoke about, our internal pipeline is a wholly owned pipeline where we're advancing medicines in oncology and rare disease, two areas where we can move quickly and cost effectively from these early biological insights into clinical candidates and quickly into a patient population as well. In addition, we're building pipelines with external partners through transformational collaborations in large, complex, and resource-intensive fields. To date, those have included neuroscience and fibrosis. Moving forward, that may also include additional collaborations in areas such as cardiovascular and metabolic disorders, infectious diseases, and more. Each of our recent collaborations that we've announced have come with significant non-dilutive capital in, ter in terms of our upfront payments. Um, but in addition to these significant uh, technology access fees, our partners bring far more to the table. In particular, they bring partner knowledge or domain expertise about these complex areas of biology. In addition, they may also bring proprietary data sets or proprietary compound libraries that help expand the breadth of chemical diversity that we can profile on our platform. And thirdly, but perhaps most importantly, is that these partners bring a like-mindedness about industrializing drug discovery and moving beyond traditional approaches. So we've had the pleasure of announcing two of the largest biopharma biotech collaborations, not just in the artificial intelligent enabled drug discovery field, but in the sector more broadly. And we've done so with two of the most experienced and forward thinking organizations. The first partnership I'm gonna talk about today is our collaboration with Bayer. This is a five year exclusive collaboration, um, including the entirety of the fibrosis disease space. We announced this uh, initial collaboration in September of 2020. At that time, Bayer paid us a $30 million upfront technology access fee, and Leaps by Bayer made a coincident $50 million equity investment to lead our Series D fundraise. Um, in uh, December of 2021, we actually expanded this collaboration to accommodate advancements that we've made in our platform technology, and in particular, a lot of the mapping and navigating tools that Lena and Imran spoke about earlier today. Currently, this collaboration anticipates working on more than a dozen projects, where each one of those projects may yield over $100 million in development and commercial milestones, as well as single-digit tiered royalties on eventual product sales. So as I just mentioned, we um, started with an original paradigm under this collaboration, what we now refer to as brute force approach. And we recently expanded the collaboration to incorporate these mapping and navigating tools or what we refer loosely to as inferential search. So under a brute force paradigm, which is where this collaboration began, what we've been doing is physically screening small molecule perturbations on our platform directly on top of disease models of relevance to fibrosis and measuring the degree to which those small molecules rescue that high dimensional fibrotic phenotype back to a high dimensional healthy cellular morphology. Compounds that show initial therapeutic efficacy in that assay are prioritized and validated in more downstream, but still mid or high throughput assay systems as we pursue them um, in different indications of relevance to fibrosis and ultimately into relevant patient populations. But with the expansion of our collaboration at the end of 2021, we've really been tapping into the power of the recursion operating system. And in particular, you know, I go back to some of the comments that Imran was making earlier today, now having profiled over half a million small molecules, specifically of relevance to fibrosis that came from the Bayer proprietary library, alongside um, our entire whole genome arrayed CRISPR knockout library, relevant soluble factors and other genetic perturbations that we've been able to engineer on the platform, we can now infer which of those small molecules may in fact 
provide therapeutic benefit in these different fi fibrosis relevant patient populations. We can extract those hypotheses from our phenomaps, and we could take those either small molecule predictions or target predictions, the more um, enriched and focused libraries from those, um, from those phenomaps, and we can test them in these more disease relevant assay systems. Both of these approaches have yielded significant results already for the collaboration. I'm excited to announce here for the first time some of the progress that we've been making under this collaboration. At the top of this pipeline, you can see how some of the initial programs from this collaboration have now moved forward quite considerably and are approaching some pretty critical value inflection points in the, um, as we transition from early discovery into our late discovery paradigm. Um, coincident with the expansion of the collaboration to use inferential search approaches, just in the last 12 months, you can see how we've already rapidly expanded the number of early biological insights and programs that we've been able to bring into this collaboration on the bottom half of this pipeline. I'm excited to announce that many of these programs are now accelerating forward under the governance of our joint project teams. So a couple of key stats and figures just to recap the progress we've been making specifically in the last 12 months of the collaboration. Since we signed this partnership, we have initiated eight projects of relevance to fibrosis. Four of those projects have been seeded in the last 12 months alone. As we and our buyer partners who's co who are coming along with us on this journey have really adopted this inferential search mindset, we've been able to really accelerate the pace of innovation. In particular, we've conducted over 40 million experiments on our platform. Those experiments have generated over two petabytes of biological image data that now resides within this recursion data universe. That data set encompasses, amongst many other things, over 500,000 small molecule perturbations that came from a Bayer proprietary library as well as our own internal uh, small molecule compound library alongside of over 100 different fibrosis relevant genes that we can now mine for early uh, chemical and therapeutic starting points. Given the success that we've had most recently using these mapping and navigating tools, it's exciting to announce that Bayer has agreed that moving into 2023, we will now begin to source 100% of all future programs using this inferential search uh, paradigm. The second collaboration I wanna speak about briefly, but importantly, uh, is our transformational partnership with Roche and Genentech. So we announced this collaboration in December of 2021. It is a decade long collaboration in the fields of neuroscience, as well as a single oncology indication. At the time of the announcement, Roche paid us a $150 million upfront technology access fee. Additional uh, terms of the collaboration include up to or exceeding $500 million in research milestones and data usage options. Additionally, Roche may pay us up to or exceeding $300 million per program for what may be up to 40 programs that result from this collaboration and our work together over the next decade. <clears throat> on top of that, we will also receive mid to high single digit tiered royalties on any future product sales that come out of this collaboration. I wanna pause here because uh, uh, while very large in scale, what these notes actually miss is the great degree of depth and collaboration that we have on the computation side for this partnership and the level of data sharing that's really unique between our parties and our collaborators that really form the core of this partnership. So uh, in doing this work, their uh, recursion is contributing significant and very large phenomic data sets. Our partners at Roche and Genentech are contributing extensive single cell perturbation data sets. And both parties are coming together to really co-invest uh, on the machine learning side with machine learning resources and know-how and investments on the data science and computation side as well. The algorithms and outputs that re result from that computation work may be exclusively or jointly owned by Recursion and our Roche and Genentech counterparts. So here I really wanna emphasize that the work being done in the Roche and Genentech collaboration endeavors to create multimodal maps of human cellular biology 
that are of relevance to neuroscience and gastrointestinal cancer, which is the single oncology field that we're focusing on. This work begins by, as has been described earlier today, profiling small molecule perturbations as well as genetic perturbations in these multiple different relevant cell contexts. Having experimentally profiled these different perturbations, we then read out changes in cellular state using either an image-based readout or sequencing-based technologies. Both of those data sets are combined in either recursion proprietary or jointly developed deep learning models and embedded into these phenomaps or to the extent they include transcriptomic data, transcriptomaps, if you will. And we are prosecuting and, and mining these maps for novel biological insights, right? Either target hypotheses or small molecule therapeutic starting points that then we can advance into, again, more mid and high throughput confirmation and validation assays that are of relevance to these two different fields of biology. What's important, and I'll just harken back to the comments that Dean, MD, PhD, completed, um, <laughs> mentioned earlier, is we iterate on this loop, right? We iterate with respect to the data, we iterate with respect to the algorithms, and if I recall what Dean was saying, we iterate with respect to um, how we prosecute those experiments that we're constantly learning, right? We're constantly strengthening our algorithms. We're constantly improving and learning this system as we go in collaboration with our Roche and Genentech counterparts. Um, the progress that we have made to date in this collaboration in just 12 short months has been extraordinary. I speak on behalf of recursion when I say that. I think I speak on behalf of our Roche and Genentech counterparts as well. Um, we're really enthusiastic about the progress that we're making in both of these fields. And while this is just a small sample of the, uh, the work that's been done over the last 12 months, we hope that we have an opportunity in the future to speak at far more length about uh, where we're going and the vision for this collaboration. So I will conclude my remarks there. They are short. Obviously, I think everyone in this room can appreciate the disclosure of the limitations that we have around these collaborations. We look forward to the opportunity in the future to continue to update you on the progress that we have made and the exciting advancements that are to come. I know that means one thing coming from me as a recursionaut to tell you about these collaborations, but it's even more powerful when you hear from our Roche and Genentech counterparts directly. So I will leave you with a quick video that showcases the recursion scientific teams as well as our Roche and Genentech counterparts talking about their excitement, right? As Ben maybe um, invoked in us earlier today, their almost childhood excitement about the power of the recursion operating system and how we can go and tackle these really complex and otherwise potentially intractable diseases. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video and afterwards I will turn it over to Heather. We've had a large contingent out from the Roshan and Tech team, our collaborators. We're talking about science, talking about what we're going to do together, applying what we've built here at Recursion, taking lessons learned and combining that together to find medicines for patients. You know the metaphor about the guy who loses his keys in the park, but he's only looking under the lamppost because that's where the light is? That's the field of neuroscience. We're all looking under the same few lampposts because that's where we know how to look and what Roche Engine and Tech are going to do with us in this collaboration is to build flashlights that will enable us to look in new places and hopefully find the keys to these devastating diseases. Recursion can collect phenotypic image at an unprecedented scale and that allows machine learning methods to work much more efficiently. When I saw the progress being made in recursion, it became apparent very quickly that the joining of these two formidable organizations would really go a long way in setting new insights into areas of very complex biology and intractable disease of high medical need. We made a strategic plan in where can we really uh, differentiate. And that was basically going after new technologies, new drug discovery platforms, uh, big data sciences, computational approaches. Basically we were looking for partners and we found in Recursion an excellent partner that basically ticked all the boxes. It's an opportunity for us in collaboration with Recursion to really push the limits of how we do drug discovery to do things that have not really been done before. 
We have strong Genetech people. You have like experts here. One plus one is, is two, right? This is like really one plus one is maybe five. And I, I think that's the, where the power is here. Yeah.